you know, he'd break out in Nerf gun fights and during the office day. And so-, so I know right now one of the hardest things to do is to get highly skilled developers yeah. to come and not just work with you, but a lot of times you're partnering with them. How yeah. and you're and that's like crucial to what you do. Hundred percent. You can't just get somebody who's from overseas and just knows how to move yep. some <laughs> things from A to B. You have to have people who are actually able to communicate. Or, or no, even back up. You have to be able to see the pain that the customer's in and articulate a solution back to them that they're going to be like, okay, here's all my money because yes. this this would be awesome if you guys can build that. And then they have to actually deliver it. So how are, yep. do, how do you solve the labor side of that? Um, yeah. what, how are you guys tackling that? Yeah, I love that you brought that up because um, it's it's a it's a mantra we've had at Foundry since the beginning, which is always be hiring. <laughs> We are always yeah. hiring. Even when we're not, we don't have an open position, we are hiring. So we are we are always in conversations with people. Um, I'm always recruiting. Uh, and you recruit nationally or locally or? Mostly locally. Um, we do, most of our, all of our uh, staff is full-time salaried employees. Um, we don't do any contractors. We do have uh, like one part-time person. Uh, and uh, in, um, we have an office in New York and uh, that that office has just three people in it right now, mm-hmm. um, but it's our it, we just opened it a year ago, so it's it's going to grow slowly. Yeah. Um, but to that point, uh, we're always out hiring and talking to people. So part of our marketing strategy is we sponsor a lot of events, especially in events that follow our values. So we sponsor a lot of uh, women who code, DEI, uh, blacks in tech. Um, uh, and this is more for recruiting, right? We're not talking about marketing for customers. You're, that's probably a bigger bottleneck as but your team rather than customers at this point, correct? Yeah, in a lot of ways, yeah. And so for us, um, because again, like Amazon and Target and these places, they can pay a lot more than I can. So they yeah. can throw money at people. I can't afford Amazon uh, developer salaries. So what I have to provide is a better environment and work life. Um, than what Amazon can provide. So how are they going to learn that and trust that? Well, they got to get to know us. So sometimes our hiring process takes a year. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll meet someone and they might be kind of casually looking, but we don't have an open position. Um, We'll just keep talking with them, meet them up for a happy hour every quarter, uh, me and my CEO and, and, or me and one of my, uh, one of the other engineers or something. And we just, we just, um, so everybody's everybody's behind that mantra of we're always hiring. And I, yeah. I, I, I really like that. And then also just for the newer agency owners out there that might be listening, right now your biggest obstacle is customers, right? So it's just like, I just got to get customers. That's all I need. But then it ends up being team members is the next yeah. thing that you need, right? Because right. you need to fulfill the work. And it's this constant cycle. And the more technical your work is, the harder that game becomes. So you could be the best at whatever you do, but if you don't have any developers, you, you're not going to be able to perform the job. So it, it's it's a it's an interesting thing. Business is an interesting thing the way that kind of plays out. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, and it's 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 it cool sure the way is. you guys are it's cool the way you guys are tackling it. One of the things I heard you say is that you want to make sure that your values align. And again, for yeah. younger agencies, when you're first starting out, you're just like, we're just a startup. Let's go, right? We and it's do just work energy. For money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then, but then you have to to retain your team members. You have to build a culture that people want to work at. 100%. So, how how do you guys approach that? Yeah, so that you know, it's funny you say that because early on, um, when we were smaller, uh, you know, me and my partners, we just kind of handled that, right? Like we would um, we'd come up with ideas for. Uh, we did like uh, pub tours on our bikes, like around downtown or. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, Nils, you know, one of my partners, who's the CEO would just, you know, he'd break out in Nerf gun fights and during the office day and stuff. So we, you know, we did a really good job early on, but as we got bigger, um, we, we brought in some people specifically to help with that and then told them that's your, your role. Um, your role is, and you are, you, uh, you're judged on re- retention of I- employees. And, yeah. Team members. What's their, yeah. uh, what's their title? Do they have like a chief culture officer or d- yeah, director direct- of people, director of people. Okay. And director so that's their, and their KPI is, is team member retention, right? Team member retention. So they're always looking for ways to engage the staff, but they are also working them individually on training ideas. Mm-hmm.